Uh, let's call the meeting to order at 513. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll start the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic, Republic. Republic. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. justice. At this time, um, we will open it up to public comment. I have not seen anybody here in person. So, Devin, do you have anybody online? We have a few online, but no one's raised their hand yet. So, we'll just give okay. it a moment. Let's give it a second to see if, uh, if anybody wants to comment. Raise your hand, please. And uh, we'll, we'll unmute you. Okay. Only once, only twice. All right, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is item D uh, for minutes. Uh, if anybody's had a, is there a chance to read them? I'll entertain a motion. So move to accept. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, here's no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes. Um, perfect. All right, moving on to item E, correspondence. Um, actually, I did not see the correspondence yeah. in my packet that got emailed to me. I got it here. It's just someone that wanted to be um, added to the email distribution list. Um, okay, to perfect. Okay, from a Paul Palmer. Perfect. Okay. Moving on, uh, reports. Uh, so first one is chair report. And since I found out I was chairing about four seconds ago, I'm going to turn this over to Kat. <laughs> um, really no updates under this. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a presentation under the architect report for interiors. Um, I think what we would be looking for there is just consensus um, that the committee is agreeable to what they're seeing there. So that will be under architect report. But other than that, it's just the other reports for the meeting. Okay, perfect. Um, next one is town council liaison report. We have not met since the last time. Um, so there's nothing to report at this time. Uh, item three, uh, board of education. We have either Sarah or Beth. Beth. Um, I'll go, I just, Notice that today, um, all the parents in the school district got the superintendent's welcome back to school letter and just thought I would tell the committee that it does include a little bit of information about, um, you know, if there's changes happening at the FHS campus and it provides a link to the FHSbuildingproject.org and encourages people to go there for updates. Um, so that was just a communication that went out about the project. Um, and then the summer newsletter, which came a couple of weeks ago, I believe, um, had project updates as well. And that goes to the whole community. So that's it. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Any questions? Okay. Uh, next item is the 1928 Building Committee. Is Chris online? Is he here today? No, he's not. Do you have anything up there? Yeah, um, the committee met last week and selected a uh, finalist for the architect. They selected Silver Petrozelli. Um, so they will begin to meet the committee and get the designs and the ball rolling um, for the 1928 project. So moving along. Perfect. All right, uh, moving on to owner's report. So I'll update everyone. So we had our big meeting with the state last week um, to get ready to go out to bid. Um, we resubmitted all the documents that need to be revised today. So we're just waiting to hear back from the state, letting us know that we can go out to bid. Uh, as far as we know, based on our meeting last week, Bob Selmer at the state told us there's really nothing major holding us up. So we should be ready to go um, within the next week or two, I think. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing is we have an ed spec review scheduled with TSVP for next Friday. Not Friday. Not Friday. Oh, it's August. It is next week. Yes. Yeah. 
It's next week's problem. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Any questions? All right, moving on to architect's report. Uh, thank, thank you, me. Johnny. Uh, so, um, Michael here. Um, so, in addition to uh, wrapping up the bid documents and getting those uh, ready to go out on the street uh, to the state's review, we're also attacking the project to button it down on a few other fronts, including that ed spec page turn just to make sure we got all of our ducks in a row. Uh, with me tonight, I'm joined by a much larger portion of our uh, TSKP and design team virtually. So uh, Susan is an associate in uh, our office who's our uh, lead interior designer. Uh, she uh, has participated in uh, some of the end user meetings. Um, also uh, with us tonight is Yugan Kim, who's a design director in our Boston office. Um, we, uh, Yugan has uh, been the champion with his team up in Boston for uh, your performing art spaces and your visuals, uh, arts, and studio spaces. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've contracted with Yugan and his uh, uh, partner, Momi, uh, who uh, operate IKB, another firm up in Boston that's a, increasingly becoming more of a sister organization with us. Um, we tend to work with them on all of our big projects. Uh, Yugon and Tomomi uh, have been tasked with some uh, visual design, way finding, theming of the spaces that will help uh, define the interior finishes of the space. It was important to push this forward so that we could uh, make sure that we have some consensus among this group as to where we're headed and that we can protect uh, color changes or material variations within the bid documents that we're about ready to bid. Again, these aren't, we're not necessarily seeking final decisions tonight. We're just uh, testing the waters and to make sure that we're preserving enough options so that as we lock these pieces in, uh, through the construction process, we're not looking at change orders or a lot of fussy uh, operations in the field of having to switch things back and forth. Uh, also, uh, with the IKB uh, team is uh, Laura Carlos, uh, who's coming in from Boston as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Momi and to Yugon and let them present where we are with the interior environments of the school. Um, thanks, Michael. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see some of you again and maybe some of you for the first time. Um, we're excited to uh, present uh, some initial ideas that we have for uh, the kind of color scheme, wayfinding um, for the interiors of the Farmington School. Um, you know, well, we like to look at project holistically and think of approaches that uh, of design elements that have kind of embedded meaning uh, and uh, really try to solve uh, problems. And so hopefully as we walk through the project, um, you can see some of that uh, design thinking within the kind of design solution we're proposing. So with that, uh, maybe Tomomi can share the screen and we can walk through a little bit uh, some ideas. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Um, these are, I think, some images that many of you are already familiar with. Uh, they were earlier on on the project. Um, some of the kind of grand communal spaces that um, I think we're all excited to see. Um, and then uh, going to the next slide. Uh, so, uh, you know, for us, every project is a little different in terms of um, the entry point, in terms of finding the right uh, design for a project. And sometimes uh, we look at Kind of different things. We look uh, at the landscape. Sometimes we uh, kind of look at the community. Um, but our entry point for this project was uh, looking uh, at this kind of wonderful work that the Farmington Public School has already done in terms of talking about their mission, uh, about how they really are um, kind of using uh, this education to really empower community uh, and the kind of students. And uh, we really thought it was really wonderful and wanted to find a way of bringing into uh, the design 
some of the kind of wonderful messages that are in the kind of mission statement um, so well deeply detailed in the website. And so a little bit of what we did was uh, we um, distilled some of the language of the website and put together these uh, kind of messages, uh, these messages of empowerment, uh, these messages of support uh, that uh, we just thought were just wonderful kind of messages to convey to the students. Um, the kind of question is, is that when we were sitting at the table uh, all together is how to create uh, a design or develop a design that really embodies uh, this kind of message and mission uh, of teaching uh, and supporting the students. Um, and, you know, don't worry, this is not what the final solution is. Um, but, you know, a lot of times we think conceptually, like, wouldn't it be wonderful if uh, somehow the, the walls of the school could speak to the students in some way and kind of support the children in the ways that we know that the teachers, the superintendent, the entire community are already doing. Uh, but, you know, in uh, perhaps a much more elegant way than putting uh, large words on the, on the wall. Um, yeah, high school, you know, for some, some people, high school is easy. For some people, it's not. Um, for me, it wasn't that easy. I was um, very anxious and, you know, always worried about getting good grades and, and if my friends liked me and stuff like that. So, you know, we thought about how wonderful it would be if the, stu the school um, was um, actually supporting a student. Like if it, for me, you know, if I was going to, to a school where I knew that the building was um, sending me these messages, how, how empowering that would feel. Also, I think for a lot of us, you know, it's hard to imagine being a student right now, just through the pandemic and through um, the violence that we've experienced in our schools. I think it can just be a very isolating experience to be um, a student and a teenager right now. So I think just the sense of community is really important, especially now more than ever. And so as Yigan said, we're not putting giant letters like literally on the walls. Um, this is uh, an idea where we're using um, the, the block, the ground face block to encode messages using pattern. Um, I'm sure everybody knows uh, Morse code. It's a language that uses a series of dots and dashes to encode letters of the alphabet. Um, it was you know, invented in the 1830s. So it's kind of old school, but it's actually pretty timeless. And it happens to be, um, you know, one of the most universal and accessible languages out there because it's um, it's really simple and it can be transmitted in lots of different forms. It can be visual, um, not just with written form, but with symbols. Um, it can be transmitted with lights and sound. And so anyway, it's it's a, um, a universal sort of um, communicative language. And here we're encoding the messages for the students using uh, bricks on the wall. So. Um, this is an example of how that works. And so really the, the medium is the message. It's, um, you know, we're not doing pattern just for pattern's sake, but um, using this as an opportunity to encode meaning into the very sort of DNA of the school. And, you know, the school is kind of like a, it's like a big city and the blocks are like, neighborhoods and there are these places of gathering like the atrium space and um, breakout spaces, um, you know, places that, that are there to support the students. And so we're trying to, to do sort of what the building is already doing, um, is lifting the, the students up and, and bringing people together. Um, and, you know, certainly we'd want to work with the school to figure out what exactly the right messages are. Um, but what one thing to note is because we're using um, these messages, they all start with we are. Um, in the example that we're showing, um, there is a sense, there's some sort of repeatableness um, to it. So the pattern isn't going to look totally random. There are sort of these moments um, that, that do repeat. And I, I guess, uh, right, we imagine that uh, we could develop some sort of QR code or uh, some sort of um, didactic so that students, perhaps uh, working with uh, the teachers, could have some uh, kind of uh, programming lessons in terms of decoding the, the message, or I guess if they want to jump to the front of the line, use the QR code to kind of discover what all the messages uh, are embedded into the kind of DNA of the building. Okay, so let's see. Um, 
So we wanted to introduce um, two color schemes to you guys. So this is a softer color scheme. And the point of these colors is really to show a range of possible accent colors using the proposed materials. Um, so it's not necessarily about the exact shade or, of the color, but just about uh, a range of lighter or brighter colors. And so this, uh, both schemes are anchored by um, the Farmington Maroon. This is a lighter shade of the maroon, which complements the other lighter colors in this scheme. But throughout the building, you'll really see more of the neutrals and the grays and beiges um, in the floor materials and the ground face blocks that are really the core materials of the building. And these accents we're proposing as uh, means of wayfinding, as means of identifying the different areas, and also bringing its sense of life to the different um, classroom blocks and the communal areas. And this is a, it's a triadic color scheme where we have, you know, these are, are so groups of colors. And so these groups of colors are assigned to different parts of the building. Yes. So you can see um, each color is assigned to a different block of the building. So you can see that we have these like blues and greens in the classroom blocks, and then more of a yellow and orange um, proposal for the music area. And then uh, in the athletic area, we would use the true maroon color. And then we're also showing it within the context of the lighter scheme as well. So this brighter scheme just shows a full range of some of the brighter colors that could be used. Um, again, using the triadic scheme, it's anchored by the Farmington maroon color that we know is really important um, for the school's identity and also for the school's new um, mascot and branding. Um, and again, these colors are accents um, and we wanted to show you the options of some of the brighter colors and what those would look like in the space as well. So these are the more uh, brighter or saturated colors. Um, you can see the blues and greens very clearly, and then also the um, Farmington maroon and a more of a brighter yellow in the music area. Um, okay, so um, you know now moving on to some of the other areas uh, without the ground face block. Um, you know we really uh, start to think uh, holistically about the entire. The school and how best to kind of disperse some of the colors that Laura has walked through. And we really kind of uh, fell in love with the idea that, um, you know, while students are walking down these larger atrium spaces where uh, there's a very clear message being conveyed to them, um, we really uh, kind of really thought about uh, the act of teaching and education itself as being a, a wonderful process between uh, student and teacher and sometimes that process is a little bit messy uh, and sometimes you don't know where you're gonna go. And so in some ways, uh, this idea of rather than uh, students being told the message, which uh, is being conveyed in the atrium spaces, uh, together with the teachers, they're making their own message. And uh, it's just that kind of wonderful uh, magic that happens between the teacher and students. And so it's almost this idea that uh, the letters or the words are being kind of uh, spread along the school, and then the students and the teachers together are picking those words up uh, to make their own message for themselves. Uh, so conceptually, you know, that's how we think about dispersing the colors through the space. Um, next slide. So again, uh, just like um, the first uh, slide with the ground face block, we're not intending to put words on the floor, but again, is this idea of the fact that uh, the act of teaching, uh, the act of learning is a, some sort of alchemy happens and that it's messy and then um, eventually something clicks and uh, both teacher and student have, uh, are aligned. And so in many ways, this is what we're doing. We are kind of spreading these color blocks along the space and as if they are kind of sprinkled on, on the ground, but then they kind of align with certain architectural elements in the space. Uh, so kind of uh, representing that and celebrating that act of teaching and learning. Uh, here holistically um, is that kind of way of how these um, block elements are scattered, but then 
get aligned to architectural elements and walls within the space. Right, maybe it's a little bit might be easier to see here how these the pattern on the floor is actually lining up with architectural elements. So um, they're not totally randomly placed, but um, we are thinking about alignments. So this is showing all the colors applied um, to those patterns that we've created with the materials on the floor. Um, and so we wanted to emphasize that in a building um, this large, the importance of intuitive wayfinding is really big just because we want the students to associate the colors with the different areas and kind of be able to intuitively um, know where they are within the space. They'll recognize certain things, you know, in the music area or in the athletic area um, that'll kind of uh, orient them within the school itself. And this is showing the brighter scheme, um, again, with the, uh, with the diagonals on the floor connecting to the architectural elements and also paying attention to um, the issue of scale and appropriately scaling to the spaces in a dynamic way. And, and these are colors that are assigned to the blocks. So both floors would have those, the, um, the same color. Yes. Um, so in the atrium breakout space, you can see we've, we have the diagonal floor pattern in this option, um, and we have the neutrals of the grays and beiges with the ground face block as well. And then you can also see um, the accent color for the associated block peeking out um, into the entry to the classroom areas. So this is showing one of the lighter color schemes um, applied to this classroom block. And so we really wanted the color to be uh, more than just surface supplied, but something that creates an occupiable space. Um, so we've used the color to wrap the space and draw the students through the areas. Um, and so certain architectural elements will be highlighted, like it might lead you um, into a niche or it might lead you to a presentation wall, um, but it kind of length lengthens the space and draws you through um, invites you into the classroom blocks instead of creating a barrier. In the breakout space, you can see that we've um, kind of visually extended the space using these diagonals. Um, the space is not so much decide, divided between circulation and sitting, but instead it's uh, a very dynamic space that draws your eyes to the moments of feature, featured walls and things like that. So this is showing the same thing, but using one of the deeper colors, which obviously has more of an impact. Um, and again, you can see it drawing through the space, wrapping up the walls, and also including some of the lockers as well um, as part of that color accent. And again, with the brighter color in the um, breakout space, you get even more of an impact with more of a contrast between the more neutral floor color. So this is showing a full range of brighter and lighter colors that we propose for the classroom blocks, just to give you an idea of some of the colors that we could use, um, and just so you can kind of see the full range. Okay, um, now moving into the uh, kind of performance arts block. Um, as you know, uh, when Laura showed the overall scheme, we are moving to the yellows and orange uh, section of the school. And so here you can see the, the yellow is really limited now to the ceiling element, uh, which acts as a, a large acoustical reflector and also to kind of house all the lighting and many of the sprinklers. You know, we've been working quite a bit with the acoustician and the theater consultant to optimize all the angles and all the surfaces to really, um, you know, make this theater a, a real acoustical machine uh, that everyone can enjoy for different types of performances. Uh, here is one of the kind of uh, practice rooms uh, where, uh, you know, we will have one room be a little bit more uh, toned to the yellow and the other a little bit more to the orange. Again, uh, these are acoustical reflectors in the ceiling that are, are shaped so that it really uh, kind of uh, 
makes these spaces sing. And so uh, we really want to have this kind of different color tone for each of the spaces. Again, so within the art block, you know which space you're, you're supposed to be in. So for the proposed gymnasium space, um, you can see that we fully utilize the uh, Farmington Maroon, which we realize is um, super important for creating a sense of community, um, which we've talked about throughout the presentation and just having that moment of gathering, uh, but also still preserving the really clean and modern elements of the space. So this is the cafeteria space. Of course, it's where all the students come together. So it's also where all the colors come together. We're borrowing the colors from the different blocks and they, um, they appear here. They um, are in the niches and then they sort of bleed out onto the floor um, in this diagonal pattern. Um, the, you know, we felt that, that graphically the space, because it's such a, um, it's a large scale space uh, that we needed this bold graphic intervention um, to sort of balance out the, the grand scale of the space. Um, so there's one palette, and then this is with the brighter color palette. Um, again, the same pattern, but with the brighter colors, uh, colors in the niches that then um, continue on to the floor in this pattern. And then this is a version with a reduced color palette where we're just using the Farmington Maroon with a secondary color, um, but this uh, diagonal pattern still on the floor. Um, so we, we also wanted to show an alternative uh, kind of pattern layout for um, the public spaces, uh, the large atrium spaces. Uh, also, um, you know, providing an option that uh, may be more suitable for different flooring material. Um, and so, uh, you know, we'll walk through some of these different design options uh, from there. So as you guys mentioned, this is a more orthogonal pattern and we've shown it with the lighter color palette and a more reduced color palette in the cafeteria, but we think it still gives um, lots of options for including the diagonals in the classroom blocks and also still having a sense of wayfinding um, throughout the school. So this is showing the more orth orthogonal pattern in the um, atrium breakout space. And so as you guys mentioned, this is an opportunity to um, potentially use a different floor material. I know there are several ad alternates um, for the flooring material. So that might uh, be something to consider. But we're again, we're still showing the more neutral tones on the floor as well. Um, and in this option, again, speaking of the ad alternate, this is, we wanted to give you guys an idea of what the space would look like, the character of the space, um, when there is no ground face block and instead there is a um, gypsum with wall covering and a rubber wall base. And so this is showing the upper levels, um, just a very different character to the space um, in these areas with, uh, instead of the wood ceiling, we have the white ACT ceiling tile, and then instead of the ground face black, we have um, the wall board with some shades of gray paint. And then also we still have uh, maintained the color accents as an important part of the wayfinding. So I guess this is uh, just another kind of example a zoom of the cafeteria area with the more orthogonal pattern um, you know, with the kind of color swatches coming out of the niches uh, and could be appropriate for many different types of uh, floor finishes. And here is, I think, a more even more subdued color scheme, uh, kind of reserving the, the color zones to be within the niches uh, and then using uh, more gray tones for the floor. Um, here uh, in this uh, other kind of community, uh, this other kind of uh, collection space, uh, rather than adding, I think, applied color to the building, we thought we would reserve it for the students themselves. Uh, so their artwork would then 
uh, uh, provide color and energy for the space. And so really we kind of just looked at different ways, different sides that uh, the artwork could be on, but we would just think it's kind of wonderful to have a dedicated uh, space uh, that the art, the students know that they, their own work uh, creates uh, the, the color and the spirit for the space. Well, and here, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, and I guess here is uh, kind of the comparison slide, um, looking at the different adult options, because I know it's very important to see. Um, and with that, I think it includes our presentation for uh, the interiors for the school. You, you got it. So again, just to put this into context, um, we're not necessarily asking the committee for approval of a specific color or even a specific material at this time. As uh, you've gone and uh, Tomomi and Laura outlined, you know, we have uh, uh, several alternates that we've been tracking really since uh, enhanced schematic design for the wood ceiling. Uh, linoleum versus porcelain tile floor and ground face block versus gypsum wallboard in that main corridor. They, uh, and you can see that the way they built the pallets were based on actual swatches of some of these sample materials that we've been using as basis of design. Once we get the bids in and we understand what materials we're really dealing with, I think then we can hone in on uh, options for, for color here. What's important for us today is that you understand really the spirit of the space, uh, how we try to make some of that space meaningful and legible uh, to a student when it's 240,000 square feet of educational environment. And in general, just get an approbation of some of the approach here, whether it's diagonal or orthogonal, whether it's blue, yellow, or uh, maroon, is immaterial. What we want to do is we want to build the bid documents so that we get good bids. Uh, we preserve these options. And as these uh, submittals start coming in, then we can make our final selections and get the material ordered and installed. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Uh, does anybody have questions or comments? What is your feeling? I know we had a little bit of this at our working group meeting last week. Um, they've um, some of the feedback was to give us some views that were more aligned with the base bits, and we kind of see the differences. Um, so I'll open it up to questions or comments at this point. Um, uh, Sarah or uh, I've had the opportunity to look at this before, as, as Johnny said. So I, I know um, for others that may be the first time that they're seeing some of the stuff. I, I do, um, I, Michael, I, I hear what you're saying is that you're not looking for our approval tonight, but I do feel as though there needs to be a space for uh, soliciting feedback. And just as you know, we have been as a building committee engaged in the design of the exterior parts of this building and the general flow of it, um, I, I do think that the committee should weigh in in, in sharing feedback. I um, I, I hold some reservations and so, some of it doesn't have to do with, um, I think it's what's included in the base bid. I, um, the concern that I just, I just offered to the other members of the committee is that the, the bottom three images that we're looking at um, is what's in the bid package. And that includes um, gypsum or sheetrock walls where everyone would be traversing. And I do hold a concern that I don't think that will have the integrity that the interior of the school needs. I know that when we examined the exterior of the school, there were um, considerations brought forward about the integrity of the, the parking lot and whether or not it would hold up um, over time with uh, the use of snow plows and, and the traffic that we'd be seeing. And, and we added an extra 200,000 to make certain that we moved from extruded concrete curbing to granite curbing. I believe that the budget item for um, the difference between the sheetrock gypsum walls and the stone um, 
walls that that you see in the alternate bit up above the one that has the the Morse code signals in it. I think, and I'm 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 I think it's between two hundred thousand and one hundred, some a little bit more than a hundred thousand to get us there. So I, um, as a member who's kind of tracked these things, uh, the same logic for the outside of a building should apply certainly for the inside where the students are gonna be. So I, 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 um, I hold that as a concern. I, 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 I feel if there was anything that we were gonna add back into the, the base bit of this package, it would be um, going back to the stone walls. I just don't feel as though that's uh, a, um, long-term gonna serve anybody. And I don't think it's gonna look good either, no matter what color you paint it. Um, so that's one one comment I'll share and encourage other members who are, who are on this committee to, to share their thoughts, because if we don't offer our feedback, just as we've changed the outside of this building, then um, we'll move forward. And, and um, I think it's important that we have a, a voice in this. The other um, concern that I'd raise is um, I do worry a little bit about um, using, you know, sat more saturated and more primary colors um in the design here i i think that um i think they tend to get overused and you do a, you do a fair amount of plugging up research on 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 interior design of of educational institutional settings i i think it i think it tends to scream that a bit more i i think you've been very creative with the use of other materials and um i guess i would caution us from uh going in that pattern i tend to like, um, I, I don't mind, the, I, I think the diagonal designs in the educational spaces are great, but I, I think there's something about that public concourse that serves as the cafeteria, as well as the entryway for the public into this space to use the gymnasium and to use the, um, uh, the auditorium. And I would, um, I'm not a big fan of all the crisscrossing. I, I think it'll create additional expense there where I think we can use the materials more wisely. And then the last point I'll make is I do believe that we, you know, I, I, I gather Michael has been great in whatever materials I've offered is, you know, is there a potentially lower cost alternative to the, to the wood ceiling that's in the alternate there. We're carrying, I think about 750,000 to get us from the ACT ceilings that you see in the lower picture up to the wood as, as an alternate amount. Um, I still, what, I, what I, I think I keep hearing back from TSKP is that they're not um, excited about showing um, more limited use of the wood ceiling. And so I still fear as though what, what's being presented to us is an all or nothing. The, the nothing is in the base bid and the all is in the alternate if we have an extra 750,000. And what I'd like to see is, um, is there something that's an in-between? If, if we've exhausted all other materials that would be less expensive, then I think we need to look at reducing the scope of it so that we can still maintain that um, thing and hopefully bring it into the budget. So those three areas, one, I, I, I feel the base bid is, is inadequate with the walls. Two, I would... I would uh, shy away from the use of the saturated primary colors and the diagonal patterns in the public concourse. And three, I, I still believe that um, it would be valuable for our, our, our cause I think this has been brought up in multiple working group sessions that the school um, staff and leadership believes that this wood look is important and have placed it at the top of their um, add alternate list. I'm not certain I would place it there, but they have. And we still don't have an alternate, we still don't have another way of using wood that would be less expensive. So I'm providing that feedback in this meeting to others who aren't part of the working group to let them know that I, I whether you know, if it's not important to the group, then we'll go with the white ceilings and with the sheetrock. Um, but I, I think there are limitations to that. I don't think you make them up with with the paint scheme. I, I, don't, don't, please don't interpret any of this as critical. I think there needs to be a dialogue of how we can um, have a conversation and have our architects be engaged in saying, then what about this or what about this? Any 
anybody else have comments or questions? I, I, hi, Ms. Sarah. I appreciate Michael's comments. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing this, so I'm still sort of digesting. Um, and uh, just one thing I would say, I mean, and I don't know if, to Michael's point of maybe coming up with some other options in terms of the base fit, the, just the, you know, the, the white ceiling, the kind of white walls, it just seems very institutional kind of with all those kind of, if, very similar colors and I'm not, and I agree with Michael, I'm not sure just adding splashes of color will make that difference. But, you know, you look at the alternate bid and it, there's definitely a dimension there that you do not get with the base bid and that is what our bid is. So I don't know if there's some, you know, to Michael's point, something else we might be able to offer there to, to just try to change that up a little bit. That's just my two cents after initial look. Thank you, Sarah, uh, Beth, or Siraj. Any comments or questions at this point? I know that was a lot to take in for the first mm -hmm. time. Yeah, this is. Oh. No, I was going to just say I made Michael articulate it much better. Um, so I, I think there were some of the things I had written down and he uh, said the same thing. So I kind of agree with most of what he said. It's a color pattern, so the diagonal versus straight. You know, because it's a one time thing, you know, once we do it, uh, or the horizon of 20, 25 years of the building, a lot of this might seem small. So I think somehow if we can make it happen, I think it would be a good investment from those perspectives. So that's a challenge. Yes. Um, yeah, I think I would echo Michael, um, Sarah, definitely. Again, this is like Sarah, my first time seeing this. This is helpful because right now we've just seen numbers on a chart as term, in terms of the alternates and base. So this is, here it is, we can visualize this. And um, I, yeah, I, I would echo some of the same concerns. It's just a very different feeling if there's any in between that we might be offered, I think now would be the time to maybe have that conversation and look at some other minor changes that might make some impact and be a good in-between option. Um, the saturated colors, I think, work in some places better than others. Um, I wasn't too keen on it on the in the cafeteria um, Main Street section. Um, and as a person who painted a new addition at my home about 10 years ago, burgundy and gold in <laughs> adjoining rooms. And uh, I'm looking to go much more neutral now. Maybe that's why that struck me, but um, that would be kind of my feedback at this point. Um, I mean, I, I would say that I, I also echo what Michael said. Um, it's tough for us to sit here and say it's all or nothing because it kind of is to me the wood and the ground face block kind of has that timeless look that I think would look really nice and and we wouldn't have to touch it for a while for various reasons, whether it's longevity, uh, whether it's from the design standpoint. I do tend to think that we do need color if we're going with white ceilings because, you know, you want to take the focus off of the, the regular, you know, um, you know, suspended ceilings and you need some color. I'm, I'm not a fan of the very bright colors in any of the major areas. I do think they make sense in the classroom areas. I think it defer to the school district as far as, you know, someone uh, like myself that might have dozed off once or twice and wakes up towards the end of class and <laughs> says, all right, where, where, where am I? Um, don't let that be a fortune of any kind. But um, I do like the, the angles in those classroom areas, I think it's creative. I think it gets kids thinking. I do think those those materials can be done without crazy extra cost. I do have concern about those in the main areas with, especially if we're going with, uh, you know, uh, ceramic versus some of the others. Um, I do like the, the more straight lines. I even think it needs, you know, even a little bit more basic in that cafeteria area. Um, I'm not for the very, very bright colors outside of the classroom areas. And I do think, and I, but I also understand that a lot of those bright colors, not on the flooring, but on the wall, especially if we're base bit, 
can be painted over at one point. So it's not something that's hard to change. You can, um, you know, kind of freshen them up. You can change them out uh, very easily. Uh, on the flooring, I have more concern just because of the longevity. So the best point of doing something and, and it looking really nice. And I've been in, you know, some buildings where they're done very modern. And yes, 10 years later, they still look great. I'm not the authority on that. I just know that this community is a little bit more traditional. And, you know, it's, it, it, even though I may not, I may like it or may not, or I may like it in 10 years, as a community as a whole, I'd be concerned of that longevity of the look that we pick. That's really my my biggest thing, and that's in those common areas that that, it, 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 that would not be easily uh, repainted if we ended up with a chip yeah. um, But I think we're all kind of saying the same thing. Um, and I I don't know if that helps from a base bid type point, because I know for you guys at this point, like you said, it's not, is it maroon in this area? Is it dead angle or not? It's more, what do we get in the base bid package and how do we, articulate that to get the accurate numbers. Does that kind of help you, Michael, with that? It does, it does. I mean, look, you know, if, if, if we were showing you cars, we would show you the, the LX model, and then, you know, you would, then you would look and, and look at what was standard off the line, and you'd be like, wow, I really like all of those features. But I mean, we've all been part of those discussions about the whys and wherefores. Um, the big picture, I'll say this, all in, all of our alternates, including the ball field, including the tennis courts as a separate bid package, about $5 million of ads, because we have a million of that area G not being demoed on the back end. Um, I would say the aggregate of the, the three main finish options that we just talked about, the wood ceilings, which I don't think are three quarters of a million, my recollection no, is award ceiling is 762. All right. And then uh, the round face block is only 130? 175. Okay. And, and the floor, which we haven't really, in the renderings, it's impossible to distinguish between porcelain tile and linoleum, but from the maintenance standpoint, we understand what the porcelain tile will get used. I mean, all of that aggregates to a little over a million, million two, probably. Well, that was about 600,000. Oh, uh, so a million five. Million six. Uh, on a, on a over a hundred million dollar project. So we'll, we'll see where the, where the market takes us. Uh, and to the extent that uh, upon seeing the bids and where we, where we sit, how the town wants to allocate those construction dollars, we can go from there. Uh, you know, some of them like the ground face block, you know, the base bid is two layers of high impact chip wall board with uh, that vinyl wainscoting below. So it's a pretty stout construction. That's why the Delta is so relatively minor. But Sam will tell you that that Delta in his painting budget annually is huge. So I, I, I think when we see, we really still don't know where the market sits on this. Uh, Torrington will be our next bellwether and it should be a pretty good one. Um, and, you know, I, we've always been optimistic, but that, that hasn't paid, uh, paid out for us. We, we do have to deliver a project on budget. And that's why we're looking at what we're looking at here. Um, but I, I think we should be able, at bid day, we'll have so much more actionable information that hopefully we can pull some of these triggers. And I, I would add that I, my mindset is, what do we do now? How much does it cost? Can we afford it? What are the long-term costs? And then what is something that you could do after? And I see the wood ceilings and the ground face being something that you're never going to redo. If you do that, you're in for it. The flooring, on the other hand, I kind of look at it like maybe it stays for 10 years. And we make it a capital project at that point to go back. So I've got less concern on that so that, as an example. Right. And so what, what can we do now that's going to give us that look that for you know minimal upkeep and then one capital project later, we can you know kind of bring the rest home. 
we didn't invent the time we're in. I mean, we just are where we are. And you're right. We're we're getting to the point where when the numbers come in, we'll be able to make more of these decisions. I, I you know, again, with all the feedback you've got as far as going into the bid documents, circling back to that, I think that that I think that gives you direction to do that. I think. You know, I don't know what the process is of actually picking the colors later on. I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. um, but there are people a lot smarter than me that can make those decisions. Maybe yeah. Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Kim, Kim is our designer. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. Um, you know, the, the feedback from the school level, district level and school level, is very similar to what you're hearing because we've seen it now a few times. And we definitely... Um, Feel that it was important for the committee to see the base bid in the alternate because it, when we first saw it, it was mostly alternate and we, you know, we were like wow you know this is great but then you need to really see it from the base bid we like the more subtle colors um, it's not an elementary school it's a high school and we would rather have subtle more subtle colors than the brighter colors i think they do get old and i don't think they are timeless um, when they're the bold colors you know we use our frame uh, of westwood it's a timeless building uh, people go in there and they think it was built last year so beautiful and it has you know subtle colors they're very farmington esque colors because we try to bring the outside in and we have a beautiful landscape in our community with the river and the forest and you know all of that we try i think westwoods did a beautiful job um at, at you know with that and they also use the wood ceilings yep. so you, there's a warmth when you walk in it's a very open large space but you don't feel it when you walk into westwoods you feel very like very much like a home homey feel and it, i think it is very calming for our students and so we're looking for that in this building i think we said it from the beginning we want a timeless building um Maintenance is uh, a concern for us because right now, you know, mostly we have center blocks, you know, it, it, that we're not doing a lot of maintenance on walls here. Um, and we aren't interested in having to increase maintenance costs in a new building. We want actually to minimize that. So definitely, I think there's consensus in what all of us are saying when it comes to the feedback, for sure. Is there any here? I, I'd just like to ask a couple of questions and maybe make a couple of comments. Um, I'm wondering if there's some place that we should get to tonight between Mike's comments that we sort of are giving everybody a, a, a look and we'll kind of hone this in and figure it out when the bids come in and some very specific direction that I'm hearing from the town so that what we're going to be looking at later could be maybe narrowed a bit. I think I'm hearing we really want the brown face block if there's any way to get it. And we really like the coding and the Morse code presentation. So I think I'm hearing that's a very critical part that we're, we really want to get into the job if we can. I think I'm also hearing we don't like the darker colors. So that needs to go away, right? That's a direction I think that we're giving it tonight. Um, we also, I think I'm hearing is, I'd like to have a way to get some wood in some places. If we get to the point where we can't have wood ceilings, we'd like them a little bit and maybe some dialogue where the most important places are can happen so that between where we are right now and what we're going out to bid, maybe there's a little bit of documentation that can be done to get pricing to retain the wood ceilings and maybe some critical spots that you guys would define with the design team, as opposed to it's all in or out with the numbers, and now we're negotiating for a couple of critical spaces versus we could know those numbers, right? We can say in a narrative, you know, we got wood, would ceilings in and out and maybe a third option of in and some very important spots. That kind of dialogue is what I'm hearing as opposed to this is where we are, go out to bid, see our numbers. I think we need to we need to grow after tonight's meeting and absorb some of the direction we're giving because I think what the client's going to be telling CHG is we've given you some feedback um, and 
we're looking for some progress absorbing that feedback. Um, and I think everybody seems to agree, Mike's pretty good at articulating his understanding of the design. And I think I'm hearing some pretty good buy-in from the rest of the team on those comments. So Mike, maybe you can maybe address what I'm trying to say a little bit. Well, I'll just take them in order. The, the ground face block with the patterns, the diversity of patterns that we're intending, we believe is well represented as the ad alternate. Hmm. Uh, so we will have good market input uh, on what that is worth. Um, as far as finding the $150,000 that we have to take out of the project to guarantee that we could get it, that would be a separate exercise that we would have to do. We would have to revisit the DP list in order to identify what we were taking away to guarantee the ground face block as an alternate. Uh, the colors, uh, I, I think we have a consensus among the group that we're not going to use the vibrant colors, but the vibrant colors as such don't exist as vibrant colors in the big documents. So that, that's a that's a cost neutral and document neutral determination. Uh, the wood ceilings, TSKP and IKD have yet to feel good about a scenario where we selectively use wood ceilings uh, because that concourse is of a piece. It is, um, in our view, somewhat of a letdown have a wood ceiling, say, at the stair in that lower, uh, or in the center renderings, or uh, in the vestibule when you come into the entryway. It, it, to us, signals that, boy, we, if we hadn't bid this in 2022, we would have done all wood, right? and we weren't able to do it. And it, it makes the, um, the large plank gypsum seat even when held into immediate contrast with its the, the wood. Uh, if you walk into a building that's more like what you see on the bottom roll, row, it's all of a piece. Uh, frankly, just about every school with the exception of Westwoods in the district is built out of materials kind of like that. It doesn't, it's not, uh, it's not an aberration and it doesn't uh, apologize for something that it might have wished it could have. Uh, uh, that said, if we wanted to put some bubbles on that ad alternate and have a sub alternate of the alternate, or if we wanted to allow for X square feet, uh, we could do that. Um, those are triggers that, that we would pull. But again, uh, it's not that we're not listening. Uh, we've heard it time and time again. We. It's not an approach that we have endorsed. I'll just say it as, as cleanly as that. Um, we tried to give you a project that is of a piece, that is deliverable regardless of the market conditions, that can be upgraded smartly. We would not advise doing the selective wood ceiling as a smart approach to get some of what you want. I think we're challenging that decision, right? We would like an option that would allow some wood ceiling program. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll jump in too um, and, and offer my, my thoughts. As a group, we have reached consensus about a number of things. And it's clear to me that we have that on this issue tonight. When we've asked you before to reduce glass, we haven't specifically said, take these panels of glass out of the building. And, and your, um, your consensus or agreement to that uh, wasn't what dictated, are we going to do that? And in this situation, you have a group of people that are saying, we want another set of numbers. And it's not like we're just trying to say, hey, listen, you listen to us, you work for us. What we're also trying to communicate, if, if I understand, when we set out our bids, for the uh, early enabling site work. It's my understanding if we were more specific with what some of our alternates would have been, we wouldn't have been in a position to afterwards go back to people and say, well, what if we just take out this? Or what if we just take out that? Or what if we just modify this a little bit? 
What I understood in being schooled from that part of the project was that the more specific we can be with what would be some of the alternates, we get pricing right up front. And I am really kind of baffled because this is the same answer we get every time that we come up in working groups. And so I am glad that it has reached the full group. And what I hear is a consensus that's reached. And so as a group that is working for us, I feel it is now your part to do just as you have with every other part of the project where we've said, we want to see what it's like to take a smaller portion of this out. I get it that aesthetically you don't like it. You've made that clear multiple times. And what we're making clear tonight, and I'm, I'm trying to be very polite about it, and I appreciate that our, um, our um, owner's rep is also pressing you on this, is that people are communicating something and you need to listen, not just simply say, let's say where the, bid, the bids come in. And that's where we've been for months and months and months. And so I, I will press on further to say, you need to do this. And I have speak as one, but I think I also just heard the consensus of this group saying they would like to see something. And I don't wanna be back in a spot where we don't get the ability to do three quarters of a million of the roof that you've designed. And then we're in a position where we're saying, well, what if we carve this out? That I believe puts us in a weaker spot, but I'll defer to our owner's rep to be able to comment on that. What, uh, what price point would you like us to try to target? If uh, three quarters of a million is too much of a big bite, what is a more acceptable bite? Is it half? Is it third? I'd, I'd start at a half. That's just me, but I, I, I'd, I'd look to, again, our owner's rep of what, what, what they'd offer. Let me back up and offer something here. Um, and I know you, you, know, you were clear about not liking not having it as a unit, but right now these wood ceilings are in that center uh, area uh, coming in from the main entrance and up to the glass. If we offered an alternate that said, let's just do the first floor, and then an alternate that says at the second and the third. And basically what you're doing is you're basically putting the wood on one floor and you're adding another and another. And I, I don't know if that's feasible. Yeah, no, I, I, again, look, uh, I'm not trying to be uh, the you know golden architect up on their aesthetics chair here. All right, I'm trying. I'm trying. We really are trying to help you on all of this. We're trying to give you uh, as much of what you want in a way that is responsible as uh, designers and also in, in the marketplace. Uh, so there's wood, to be clear, there's wood only on two floors. The third floor is mostly enclosed and it becomes its own little world. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I, I, uh, where we have reduced glass, we have, because you don't show up to a building and say, you know, I bet you they really wanted 20% more glass in this building. It just doesn't enter into one's consciousness. If you were to walk into a building and say, wow, they got all this wood on the first floor, but they didn't get any on the second floor. That's unfortunate, because really the second floor ends up being the, the larger area of the two, right? So if you want to pay for your buck. So I, I wouldn't create like a, a luxury floor and then a reduced floor like that. You know, that, that sends a mixed signal too. Uh, nor would I necessarily put all the wood at the front of the building, because that's like when you go into a, a suburban home development, you got all the nice finishes on the front facade, and as soon as you turn the corner, you see that it's only a, a four inch veneer. If you give me the price point, we will try to do the best allocation of that as a way to respond to the repeated request from the um, I'm, I'm not sure it's going to be magic that we'll exactly hit that price point, but if, if you don't want to listen to your architect telling you what is the right decision and you want a you want to split the baby on this you tell me what is the accept uh, what is the acceptable split if it's half we can target half if it's only if you want to buy in at a hundred thousand you know i'll i'll try to come up with a reasonable scheme that allocates a hundred thousand but i i can, can i Mike, you, you have been listening and working with this group for a very long time. 
is the of all of branch color books. I, I've seen it in my period of time. And you just articulated better than I could that there is a plan that you could come up with that isn't all or nothing, right? Just, just in your frustration right there, you answered a couple of questions. No, I don't want to do first floor, second floor, and no, I don't want to just do front and back. So you're proving that there, there is a smart way to go about this, right? There is a way in which your team can collaborate and come back with a with an option that isn't dictated to you or isn't like an engineer might do. We'll do the first floor and not the second floor. So I'm hearing what you've done timeless times here. You found solutions. Yes. And I think rather than arguing about a dollar value tonight, I think that when the dust settles and you wake up tomorrow, you could probably come back to us through the committee with, with, a, with a suggestion that you could make work. Well, no. You're asking me to do it despite my repeated attempts to try to do it and fail. I want to be very clear. At ESD, we looked at this, and we continue to look at this. We know it's important. We're not, we're not deaf, and we ourselves are advocates for this building. Every time we try to do this, we do not find something that is balanced and wise to do. Yet you are asking us to do it, so we will generate a scheme for your consideration. Hopefully, it will bid out well and we can get it all, and we won't have to choose the uncomfortable middle ground. Uh, that alternate will not come with a recommendation. I mean, it, it's not that we're ignoring you because we know it doesn't work. It's because we've tried and tried and tried, and we're not showing it to you because we don't believe it works. Everything we're showing to you here, we believe works. We would build any variation of what we just showed, right? Except the wood seal. But you want, Something in the middle, we'll give you something in the middle. We'll give you half a satellite radio, or we'll give you good rims on two wheels of the car, and you can do the standard rims on the other two wheels of the car. I'm, I'm not trying to be crass about it. I'm trying to very clearly illustrate that we're trying to help you on this, and we have. Can I, can I offer something else then maybe? Um, is there a way that you could come up with, I mean, uh, again, Maybe there's another part of this package that needs to be deducted if this is something that needs to be added back. So if you believe that strongly that this is an, in a design feature that has no other options, uh, and, I, and I, I'm not certain that that's, I, I appreciate that you're saying you, you've, you studied this, is it eliminating some of the, um, some of the skylights in other areas? In other words, if you believe that this is an immovable design feature, I'm also, I don't want to be deaf to what you're saying, then find something else because I don't think we're going to end up with a half a million and I don't want to wait till the end to not know if there was another option that could have been pulled because I hear every time that I'm in a meeting from everybody who works for our school system that the wood on the ceiling feels like an important design feature. And so I'm trying to bring voice to what I know has been voiced already. So I, 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 I'd open up, you know, two potential options. One is you bring back another way of, of, of how you reduce the cost of the roof by changing its design, the wood ceilings, I should say, or you find some other way of achieving that potential savings to be able to bring that back into the, to the bid in a way that you think architecturally works in a way that nobody on the committee has found. that under advisement we'll, we'll give you an option i mean clearly you know an, an accommodation must be reached that's very clear okay. any other comments or questions the only thing i want to just add is patterns are important on bid documents so you probably should decide on patterns you know have some consensus on patterns so it's not necessarily the colors would matter as long as you stay within a certain range, but patterns will matter. So if there's a lot of patterns, it's just cost money, that's all, you know, in a, in a scheme of things. Right, I think less complicated well, patterns is faster, quicker, you know, so you might want to give some. Understood. 
understood. And I think I think we made it correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the angles in the classroom areas were fine, but in the bigger areas, I think we were looking for more, you know, simple, straight, square. Uh, unless any other square, yeah, in the larger, in the larger areas, right? And I think we're, I think we're all on the same page on that. That makes okay. sense. That's that's actionable for for both the flooring options, right? Mm -hmm. Porcelain tile makes more sense in a rectangular pattern, mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll be able to get good bids for both of those options. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Thank you. Hey, um, if I could just make one quick comment, this is Mark. I think the other thing we just want to make sure we understand is clear is that no matter what option we go with, and I think you've done a good job tonight showing that, that the Farmington colors are the colors that will be in the athletic, uh, you know, facility, that there's, that there's, there's no other options, whether we chose, you know, it's the lighter, the brighter uh, colors, it's that those colors will, will, will be what's going to be used in that athletic uh, um, section, that athletic, athletic area going to yield a, a great home court advantage for the <laughs> I thought it looked great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and sure. I sent you the specific colors. Sure. Yes, and Kathy's given us the, the, color, uh, the color numbers. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to construction manager's report. All right, uh, so we've just been supporting the other efforts with going to PCR, um, doing what needs to be done with that um, as far as the estimate and any other documentation that we needed to provide and um, going out, you know, waiting to go out to bid. And uh, Mark's going to give an update on the construction side of things. Yeah, just real quickly with the, the enabling package, we're, we're moving right along. Um, pretty much on schedule, um, we are looking at um, um, actually paving the lower lot um, by the end of next week, and then we'll have a straight the following week. So we're, we're in pretty good shape there. Um, they are running a lot of the um, storm drainage up in the park last night. You probably saw it driving in. So we are kind of moving our barriers around and temporary fencing around it to get those those lines in. But prior to I mean prior to the teachers coming back up the, the hill here, we'll have that cleaned up, the trenches patched, and the permit fences installed. So I know it is a little bit chaotic out there right now. Um, but we are working around again on those fences and just move the beers on a day-to-day. -day, so hopefully we can um, all get our cars out tonight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be the last one to leave tonight to make sure that the, the breeze out and I can shut the gates and things. But uh, uh, no, things are things are going well. Um, fencing uh, company should be back here tomorrow. Um, continue on with the chain link if we can um, install it, and uh, they will actually they're starting to grade the back property line. Um, out and once that that grading is done, we'll build the temporary walkway back there, uh, pave that after we do the lower lot, and then we'll get that the, the temporary fence. So, so it's a moving along. Great. Great questions for Mark. Uh, I just had a question on the bits package. I don't know when are we planning to send the bits out for? Right now, the current plan is August seventeenth. <laughs> And Torrington went out to bid last Wednesday, so that puts us three weeks behind them, and that's a really good buffer. We kind of want to avoid them. Those are that's our competition. That's the bigger trade contractors. So we a good three weeks. That's we, they were supposed to be a month ahead of us, but if, if we bid on time, we'll be there's a three week buffer there, so we wouldn't want to go out any earlier than what's on our schedule. What, what's their bid opening bid? Um, cool. I'm gonna have a critical. We're gonna, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go out to bid. And when I go out to bid and advertise, we usually give a different date than when we end up with. We usually give them like three, four weeks, and then we'll end up extending it as the bidding goes on. But as far as our critical contractors, we're gonna be bringing them in earlier, and that will be some bit of like September 20th. All right, that's when we'll, we're gonna wanna start scoping them. So there'll be critical contractors that we'll be bringing in while we're still out to bid. And then we'll vet them, we'll vet the numbers, and then we'll, Come to the building committee to try to get approval on those by then the rest of the bid numbers will be in but the gmp won't yet be established but we should know financially where we are overall 
So it'll be about the, the third week of September, middle of third week of September. Because it's really like. Do you think Torrent Tip will be open by before like three weeks? We're, we're going to be like this. So we're going to have to coordinate. We'll definitely coordinate with them and make sure we're avoiding each other at all costs. But we definitely want that three week, at least that three week gap, because we don't want to shift gears and make the bidders start picking and choosing which job they want to bid. Yeah. If they're already if they're already halfway down Torrington, they may say, well, forget about Torrington. Or forget about Farmington, I want to finish Torrington, you know. It's important to keep them appropriately apart. So, so, so in the bids package, do you have any language that says, you know, one, if the pricing index goes down, they reduce the price or the two-year print down? No, their, their bids are going to be locked in. So there's no there's no savings to you and there's no cost increase to you. So the bids will be based on the construction schedule and whatever happens in the market after bid day, that they, there's the risk is on them. So they either, they either get to save the money or they get to spend more money depending on when they're actually doing their work. So some things they'll know they can anticipate like labor. So they'll know when, based on the construction schedule, they'll know when they're gonna be on site so they can anticipate wage increases, you know, because every year wages tend to go up. So they can, they can kind of foresee that. Um, materials, you know, depends on what they can lock in, but you, you will not be subjected to the risk. No, because the reason I was saying was, you know, there's a lot of, the recession would be thrown around. So over the two year time period, the prices come down, you would end up paying more. So it's a way to put a language if, you know, not that you know, it's just 2% reduces the central pricing index, you want to save, but if it goes down 10%, you would want the vendors to say they can do back some of that money, not all the 10% or something. So I would be interested to see if you put some language to see if they would uh, increase for that and say they would be willing to play with that kind of, uh, yeah, we don't typically put the escalation or de-escalation in there. If, if you think about the site contractor, our site bids are going to have to include the cost of asphalt being placed, there, you know, two years from now. So they have to anticipate what asphalt is going to cost. But it's the only way for you guys to know that you have a project on budget. I know you're anticipating a, a lowering. Yeah, so that because, you know, uh, because we're not assuming a 10% annual increase, we are a high point. Everyone's saying it's going to go down. I mean, if it goes up and we lock in, it's good. But if it goes down, then you'll be locking it yeah, very high. I don't know what the legalities are. Of yeah, there's, there's no way to really it. establish what those what those values would be, right? Because you are you are selecting the contract based on the lowest responsible bidder. This number may be on a large package, maybe five hundred or a million dollars lower than the next guy. So to, to go to him a year from now and say, well, the, the price of steel has dropped. So we want to credit back. Um, what you're going to hear is that guy is going to say, well, I was anticipating that that market fluctuation at that point, and I carried a lower value than the next bidder. Um, be very, I, I don't, I don't, to be honest, we've never had the experience of actually going back and asking for yeah. you know, that, you know, that lower number. thought process is a good thought, but it doesn't work in this environment. It's public bidding process. Uh, because we used to do that in uh, chip manufacturing. Because you know when uh, we buy you know, millions of dollars of chips, the price sometimes goes down, but you can't put a quota for the two years, right? So it's, there's a pricing index that the market tracks of what the cost is. So if it goes to a certain percentage, then the look at the pricing used to kick in, and there's a huge savings uh, used to save when I used to. Uh, so I was just curious if there's an industry pricing index that could be used and say you know, industrial index that. Also percentage that's our at least discussion to see you know, what this is. Yeah, and I, I will I don't know what the legalities are either that if you're going to adjust it down, would you have to adjust it up too? Like you have to do both sides or is it it's only a savings? Usually we do only low side because it are so many and if you're buying a widget and you know the purchase order price of that widget, like say you're just buying copper or something, then I guess it's easy enough to see the commodity of that, but no, I mean, it's fine. Uh, like packages are more than just a material, you know. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we got that say the both for human resource, like you know, uh, role based as well as material based. So, just curious if that yeah. would be incorporated at this, as a hedge in case, you know. Yeah, if everything goes down and there's 20% down, then it would be like you know, you could have all the all the panels you wanted, you know. 
So just a thought. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's move on to communications. Um, we had to cancel our meeting today, so we have no report. Uh, the only thing I would say is that I know that Nelson and I uh, went out a couple of weeks ago. We ended up getting rained on and lost power for three or four hours in the neighborhood. Uh, we did make it back out on this past Thursday, and we basically hit uh, all the abutting neighbors to the school and they dropped the flyer. We did talk to a couple of them that were outside or around, um, so we did finish that. Um, so everybody in the neighborhood has been given that flyer with the phone numbers. All right, moving on to professional partnership. If there's anything to report there. Uh, financial report. Um, there is an invoice tracker that's been updated and placed at your seats. That's just reflective of the invoices that are on tonight's agenda. Perfect. Moving on to item G. Um, can I get a motion to approve the following invoice package for uh, the three items listed for Construction Solutions Group for uh, 22597, Construction Solutions Group for the 1030, and then Innovative Engineering Services for the 1540 and 90 cents. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Perfect. Uh, moving on to other business. Everybody seems so willing. <laughs> All right. If there's no other business, then uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Perfect. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 I'm not asking for a post. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.